If you've ever wondered what journey maps are or how to make them, you're in the right place. Stick around on today's video. I'll be sharing with you four different kinds of journey maps, a four step process on how to make them and how to connect data and analytics to make your customer experiences better. Before we get into that, I thought it'd be fun to share with you a little bit of the history of human-centered design and one of our major inspirations for doing customer experience journey mapping and a gentleman by the name of Doug Dietz. Doug Dietz was an engineer from General Electric who invented the MRI machine. After creating the MRI machine, Doug had a chance to observe a family who brought their daughter in to get an MRI scan and what he saw changed his life and ultimately showed a lot of leaders around the world how important it was to build empathy into the work we do. 10 years ago, Doug gave a TED talk about human-centered design and the rest is history. I found Doug's work entirely inspiring, and if you'd like to watch his TED Talk, I put a link in the description below. Okay, so let's get into journey mapping. I like to think of journey mapping in four different categories. One, the workshop journey map. Two, the conceptual journey map. Three, the service blueprint. And four, the enterprise level journey map. Most people are familiar with some sort of workshop journey map. These maps are great for gathering consensus among teams or corporate stakeholders. Typically, when you think of these maps, Sticky notes come to mind and workshops are led by someone familiar with the customer experience or human-centered design strategy. There isn't really a wrong way to make them. People will have widely different approaches to them and in most cases, the goal of the workshop is to create a common perspective of the customer and organize teams towards CX goals. When we leave the workshops, we often have to translate the workshop journey map into some sort of visual representation of the customer journey to share with wider audiences. And when we start making decisions about how to visualize the journey, it suddenly becomes clear that there are almost limitless ways to do it. So on the topic of conveying our conceptual journey of, of the customer experience, I like to call these kinds of journey maps conceptual journey map because they convey your new customer experience ideas to a wider audience. Eventually, a conceptual journey map and the experiences they want to achieve has to be put into action. That's where service blueprints come into play. The service blueprint outlines specific tasks that a customer is trying to achieve along their journey, the people with the company that are responsible for each specific experience, and a detailed process to implement solutions. The benefits of service blueprints are their ability to orchestrate customer experience change. The downside is they often relate to a small group of people within an organization and don't scale to wider teams that well. The best way to think of the relationship between a conceptual journey map and a service blueprint is that the conceptual journey maps are strategic documents and the service blueprint is the tactical execution of CX. Ultimately though, if you're gonna go full pro on customer experience and journey mapping, you're going to end up creating an enterprise level journey map. These maps are managed inside a journey mapping platform and in the best cases, connect customer data directly to every stage of the customer experience and every step of the journey map. On that note, a few years ago, I was introduced to a platform called Semantica and it's been my preferred solution ever since mainly because Semantica has more than 200 data connectors to feed live customer data into every touch point. If you'd like to learn more about Semantica, I put a link in the description below for you to check them out. And full disclosure, I'm partnered with Semantica, but I know that they're not the only solution for every job. So for that reason, I've also included a list of other platforms in the description below so that you can find one that suits your needs. Now that we've covered all the different kinds of journey maps, let's talk about how to make them. I usually follow the four same steps whenever creating a journey map. The first step is to create the persona, identify the customer we want to address. The second is identify the touch points, the places where the customer interacts with our company or brand. Third, finding out the data that we can attach to each of the touch points so that we can improve the customer experience along the way. And finally, sounds crazy, at the end, I make the map. Let's get into how to do this. The first step is creating the customer persona. Persona should include a description of the person taking the journey, their motives, desires, challenges, and intended outcomes. Semantica has a good persona template that works well by integrating the persona into the journey map. Another way to create personas is using HubSpot's free assistant, which is great for students or beginners. 
I've included a link in the description below to access the HubSpot free online tool. Finally, if you're looking to try the newest way to address persona building, you can explore ChatGPT. ChatGPT uses AI to create general personas on demand. The nice thing about ChatGPT is you can ask the platform to elaborate on the persona wherever necessary. The watch out with ChatGPT is that the persona is generalized and needs to be tailored to your specific customer and company to be useful. And for those looking to try ChatGPT, I put a link in the description below. Now that we've identified, created the persona, the next step in building a journey map is the identification of customer touch points. Customer touch points start at the front end of the journey where customers first interact with the brand. These places can be social media or digital ads as an example. Touch points in the middle of the journey are places where the customer engages with your brand like websites, mobile application, retail stores, or by phone. The final steps in the journey lead to long-term relationships or customer lifetime value and will include email subscriptions, customer care activities, and loyalty programs. Now, step three is all about connecting customer feedback or insights to our touch points. At each touch point, we want to get an idea of current benchmarks and try to attach ongoing measures of performance. Gathering customer data can come from customer surveys, focus groups, or digital platforms like your CRM. In some enterprise level journey mapping platforms, there are also data connectors called APIs that feed customer intelligence directly into your journey map for each customer touch point. And then the final step is the creation of the journey map. That is to say, the best journey maps use a lot of upfront research to inform teams about customers and their experiences prior to creating the journey map. The more information you add about a customer's thoughts, feelings, and actions at each step of the journey will help everyone improve the overall customer experience. Ultimately, the way you portray the journey map whether with sticky notes, conceptual visualizations, service blueprints, or within a CX platform is up to you. The main goal is to help everyone involved understand who the customer is, what they want, and how you can continuously improve customer experiences going forward. And that's all there is to it. Four basic steps to creating a journey map. Create a persona, find the touch points or interactions with the customer, add data to your touch points to continuously improve, and build a map. You can build a map in a workshop, you can build a conceptual diagram, you can create a service blueprint, or you can enter all of that information into an enterprise level customer experience platform. With all that said, you should be well on your way to journey mapping. Next week, we'll be talking about how to acquire customers and retain customers, customer acquisition, customer lifetime value. Until next time, I'm Dennis Wakabayashi, and remember, the future of CX depends on you.